It's the Mustang Mach-E, and I can't think of another Ford since the original Mustang, which has the potential to transform the brand as much as this. But while the original Mustang was born in JFK's space age, this one lands in Elon's space age. Built on an all new platform, Ford's first mainstream electric car is available with either a 76 or 99 kilowatt hour battery and with either a single motor or twin motor layout with between 250 and 330 horsepower. Claimed range is up to 370 miles, making it one of the longest haul electric cars around. Prices start at £40,000 and rivals include the Polestar 2 and Tesla Model Y. But this is not just a Mustang. It's got to show Ford's electric direction for the future and lay a track for everything else to follow. Let's see if it's any good. Right, I'm going to give you a tour of the Mach-E, but we're going to go that way, but I have to come this way to start with to open up the bonnet and show you what's underneath, because in this lovely long bonnet here, where there's room for a lovely V8, there's no V8, in fact there's nothing really except a bit of space. Um, they've put a drain hole in so you can put your wet clobber in there. Um, come along the sides, we've got a charging port for the car is here. Mostly self-explanatory these days, there's a little button there to release the cable when you're done. No door handles anywhere along here. Instead, you've got a little button and if you just press it, the door pops open a few inches and then you just pull it with the lever. Um, there's also, can you see all these buttons on here? There's the option of having pin code entry. I'm not sure it's legal in Europe at the moment, but Ford are also saying that it teams with your phone, so you can actually have entry from your phone so you don't even need the key in the first place. Same here, again, button release for the back door. Press it, pops open a couple of inches, in you get. And the roof line drops away a little bit here, you can see, so it's got this illusion of being like a coupe when the actual roof line stays higher, which is useful for when you open the boot and open, there it goes, carry on, carry on. And you've got a big old boot in there that's actually a reasonable size. It's not like an estate, it doesn't come out to here and give you a lot of nice square area but you've got a lot of floor space and if you open it up, you've got charge cables under there. So like any other electric car, it's super simple to drive. So the first thing you need to do with the Mackey -E is get your modes straight. So at the moment we're in active, which is regular, then you have whisper, which is quiet and smooth and untamed, which is what we're gonna go for, which as it sounds is the sportiest one. In America, that's called unbridled. So you can play with the sound. You've got propulsion sound setting here, which I've just engaged. And can you hear that? They say that it is inspired by 80s sci-fi cinema. I say it's inspired mostly by a fairly plain V6. It's a Mustang, right? So the most important thing is how it drives. So on sweeping roads, it's actually really nice. It's very planted and stable. You don't get in too much roll into it. It just behaves itself. It glides along quite nicely. It's a slightly different story at low speed. When you slow down in it, the ride does get a little bit more lumpy. It's a little bit less pleasant around town. They've obviously gone to make it quite a sporting setup. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. There's more edge in here than there is in a Tesla, but not than a Polestar. The Polestar is quite sharp. There will be a GT along in due course, which they're saying is gonna have 480 horsepower, and they are targeting three and a half seconds to 60 miles an hour. It's gonna be a quick car. This is plenty quick enough. It really does get up and go. Look, I'll slow down a bit to like 20 miles an hour and clog it. There you go, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's, it's quick. But of course, being an electric car, you don't get much sensation of the engine or anything having to work very hard. It's very calm and placid. I like the way it goes down a road, and I didn't think I would. I thought it was going to behave much like any other two and a bit ton electric crossover. But actually, there is a bit more to it than that. I quite like the way it steers though. It's not trying to be aggressively sporty when you turn it in. It's just got decent response, but when you get on the power out of the corner, it tries to send the power to the back first. It's a little bit involving. You'll get a bit of slip at the back axle. 
it's greasy and cold out there, so maybe that's not surprising and it's not going to do it on a dry summer road, but at least it's doing something interesting. I think it's a really well judged car this. I think if you're not interested in driving, you'd get into it and find it perfectly easy going and good natured. And if you do enjoy your driving, I think you find there's enough sort of bite and edge in it just to get something out of it. But let's not pretend that it's a Mustang as we know it and love it. It's a very different type of car. This is a crossover that happens to drive quite cleanly and nicely. The Mach-E is relatively efficient. In cold, wet weather, it covered three miles for each kilowatt of charge consumed, which is more than we've got from any rival bar a Tesla, and equates to a range of over 260 miles. No, not the 332 miles Ford claims you'll notice, but if you want more range, go for the rear-wheel drive car with the big battery. Welcome to the inside of the Mac. E. So, the seats are really comfortable, but it's a Mustang. You expect a bit more bolstering and a bit of a sort of sportier wraparound feel, and you haven't really got it. But it doesn't matter because you are comfortable. The steering wheel and driving position is nice and natural, and you're sat up at SUV level. There's a screen here, but that just gives you your information and your warnings. You haven't got any control over that. And you've got a lot of storage as well. There's a big tray here, and the big tray's got an induction charging pad for your phone built in. And there's another one underneath it, and some cup holders, and an armrest here which flips up, and you've got a big storage area under there. You're well catered for. You've got nothing to worry about in that regard. Some nice materials around though, although there's quite a lot of different materials. You've got a bit of carbon, you've got some leather, you've got some fabric. That's actually a Bang & Olufsen soundbar across the dash there. Headroom and legroom is decent in the back, and because the floor is flat, even the central passenger doesn't have much to complain about. So that's the interior, and it's fine and functional and quite easily understood and easy to get on with. But really, when you're interacting with the car, you're coming into the screen. Now, it's a really clever thing. It partners with your phone, and there's a load of apps and things that you can use. But I want to concentrate on a couple of bits and pieces. One of which is up here, it says afternoon suggestions. So the car learns how you use it, what you tend to do, this sort of thing, and then will change the suggestions in this top bar for what it thinks you're gonna need or want. So for instance, dynamic park. It's probably worked out that I've got 48% of battery left and I'm probably gonna need some charge at some stage and this can help take me there. It'll ping up and show us, yeah, there you go, some car parks nearby that have charging but then we come into some other things so trips this is the one i like so the trip computer is actually labeled where did my energy go well, i didn't really appreciate this but 11 percent of the battery use so far has been for the climate control 73 percent has been for driving 12 percent has been for exterior temperature which i guess means just managing the battery pack because it's only about five degrees centigrade outside i showed you the driver controls earlier between active whisper and untamed untamed if we come down the other side there's a bit here for driver assistance and if you go into the settings for driver assistance they are endless. You are here for as long as you'd want. There's pre-collision assistance, rear camera views, blind spots, wrong way alerts, cross traffic alerts. They go on right down this traction control right at the bottom but because they're assuming that no one will ever want to know, go near it or at least they're trying to hide it away. But a lot of this stuff is actually, it, it works but it's a bit frustrating like it is in any other car. If I come up a couple, there's the charge area, and there you can look at how much charge you've got in the battery and also sort the timings out so you only charge when the electricity's cheaper or whatever else. When you're driving along with a touchscreen, it's difficult. What you actually need to do is park up, get your settings right, and then leave it alone. Who builds this car? Ford, right? Show me the Ford badge. It's not there. No Ford badge there, that's another horse. Mackie there, no. Haven't missed anything else on the sides, and no, nothing on the back either. And in fact, you're not going to find a Ford badge anywhere on the Mach E, and that's cool for the Mach E because it's got the Mustang branding, and that's great and interesting and a bit cooler. But where does it leave the future of Ford's electrified products? Prices start at just over £40,000 for the entry level car with rear wheel drive and the smaller battery and rise to £57,000 for the long-range all-wheel drive car you see here. It's the entry-level car that looks the best value. With a 0-60 time of 6.1 seconds, it's not slow, 
and the claimed 280 mile range is respectable. And on Ford's finance, putting five grand down, you'll be paying £470 a month over three years, rather than over 800 for its bigger brother. So what do we think of the Mac-E? Well, look, it's got the Mustang detailing and it's got the Mustang badge. But actually, that's all a bit of a distraction. This is Ford's new electric crossover. And if you think about it like that, it's actually very good indeed. 